Hey, how are you guys doing today? Great, Great, Errol. How are you? I love your photo. Thank you so much, man. That that uh, the, the tool that's there is a Native American, it's called acoustic, which is all about uh, building up your confidence and courage to go to your enemy and just touch him on the shoulder. And, and then this way you can say, hey, you know, no matter how bad the world is, we can still touch each other. That's wow, awesome. I need one. I need one of those. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a business. Oh, it is. <laughs> this book gives people the opportunity to step into a world that was so dark, and yet you guys give us so much light. I love it. But to put it together, it required a lot of work. So how did you guys collaborate in that way? Well, um, you know, it, it all began a long time ago in a Hollywood far, far away. <laughs> um I met Fred Otash back in 1990 when I was working in development at Warner Brothers Television. And um, <clears throat> I thought I found the holy grail of Hollywood stories, you know, a, a real life Philip Marlowe, whose uh, life intimately intertwined uh, with, with some of the greatest icons of the 20th century. Uh, you know, characters like Freddie Otash come along once in a life, lifetime. So needless to say, I, I was rather smitten and i and i've been obsessed with telling a story ever since and you know three day three decades later here we are um unfortunately fred's legacy has been rather raped and pillaged by various fictional authors um uh ever since his mysterious death uh in 1992 so when josh and i sat down to write this book um our primary goal was to uh to tell Fred's authentic truth, juxtaposed to all the the fiction and and the fake news that, sadly, ha, has become rather embedded in the cultural zeitgeist, and and that goal would have never been possible or or credible if if not for Fred's daughter Colleen, who uh, so graciously granted us exclusive and unfettered access to her, her father's archives that um, until recently have sat dormant inside a storage facility for nearly three decades oh my god oh my. you know one of the one of the things about this book is where, where i'm kind of torn is the fact that there, there's a side of me that that feels that fred is is a hero but at the other side because of all of the fake news like you were talking about you you don't know where to go in what direction and this book really does set us straight yeah that was the goal we wanted to we wanted to to uh, uh to set the record straight and and um in essence uh uh, give readers uh, a firsthand eyewitness account of the events in his life, as he said they actually happened. In in essence, we're we're allowing Fred to speak from the grave, wow. uh, if you will. And and uh, in many ways, this book is a it, it's a reclamation of his truth and his humanity. Mm. You know, I, I call that that theory, uh, dear future reader. In other words, what we put on paper will will be found somewhere else in the future and how we put it out there. And that, that's exactly what this book is. It's like, hey, look, I live this life and now someone else is going to share that story and we're going to we're going to really bring it forward. Exactly. I love that. Yeah. yeah. I was so intrigued to know, and this is so Hollywood that, you know, cause we always see the movies and the TV shows where they bug homes and bug offices. This dude was real. I mean, he really did it. Yeah, he was notorious for bugging the homes and offices and playpens of the movie stars and kingmakers uh, in, in his day. And, 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 you know, let's face it, Fred operated in the gray area. Um, uh, he, he himself admitted uh, uh, the wiretaps, you know, were illegal, but used them in, in many cases to, to help people out and, one of those situations was when Rock Hudson was kicking his wife right. Phil Skates to the curb. Fred was hired by her lawyer to record Rock's confession that uh, he was a homosexual. In fact, had an affair the, the day after they were married, and was able to to get Phyllis uh, a divorce settlement. You know, a proper divorce settlement that she well deserved. Oh, my God. I remember that moment so well. But sadly, I learned it through the National Enquirer what, because Rock Hudson was still a superstar. He was on Dynasty and, and, and the kissing and everything like that that was taking place. Uh, people just, you know, they just kind of went, what the hell? What's going on here? And so I'm glad that you covered that in this book. Yeah, it's, it's quite a fascinating story. There's actually in the book is a full transcript of his confession uh, to Rock's confession to his ex-wife Phyllis, and uh, delves into 
some of the areas that he discussed with his psychiatrist. So it's, you know, it, it, there's really some interesting depth, uh, certainly in that case, um, uh, that's covered in the book. Did you feel like historians or did you feel like that you were journalists when you were putting this book together? I, I felt like an archaeologist. Yeah. I mean, I thought it was rather ironic that I was I was kind of putting on my private eye. We were kind of putting on our, our, our private eye hats in, in investigating Fred Otash. And uh, because we had this incredible treasure trove of, of files that just went on and on, um, you know, it was it was absolutely amazing and, and fascinating. Can you imagine in today's world if Fred was here? Look at the technology that he would have in his hands. Oh, I mean, it, it would be a whole other world. Uh, <laughs> you know, then he was dealing with what was, you know, at the time, state of the art methods of electronic surveillance and, and, his, and his, his specialty, which was wiretapping. But I can only imagine uh, what he would be able to do uh, with what we see today. He had to have had some serious guts and, 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 and the willingness to do things, because when you go and investigate a politician, God, that's a dangerous game, is it not? Absolutely. I mean, uh, but, you know, he, he had a, uh, you know, he, he, Fred, Fred was a tough guy. I mm. mean, you know, he, he, he learned how to roll the hard way. I mean, he was, he was a, an ex Marine who, uh, uh, turned LAPD cop, uh, a vice cop. He kind of rose from the ashes of an LAPD, you know, riddled with corruption, uh, to become, the premier private detective in the 50s and 60s. And, you know, let me put it this way. It's hard to be a pillar of virtue and rectitude when you're the top private eye during one of the most iconic and rather lawless periods in Hollywood history. Behind, you know, behind its glamorous facade, uh, the city was rife with crooked cops and power brokers and mobsters, <laughs> FBI and CIA agents at every turn. So... You know, at the end of the day, Otash was was hardly morally indifferent. But um, as Hollywood's king of the snoops, as National Enquirer uh, dubbed him back in the late 1950s, operating on the the edges of ethical conduct uh, came with a territory. Um, but ultimately, he was committed to serving justice for his clients. Wow. The, the, I could totally see this book becoming a movie with Russell Crowe playing the part of, of Fred. <laughs> well, interest, interestingly enough, uh, Russell Crowe's character in L.A. Confidential is, is partly based on Fred. Um, so uh, we could uh, maybe uh, use some new casting. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> you know, what, what's interesting about this book is the fact that we have all seen these black and white uh, legendary photos. And it's almost like you guys step in between those black and white photos and saying, hey, look, there's there's a story here. I mean, Judy Garland, Frank Sinatra. You've got stories here that go with those photographs. Yeah, and that was the great part about uh, having Fred's archive um, <laughs> To, to write the book. Um, you have the real inf information uh, straight, you know, from the horse's mouth uh, as it happened at the time. So we're able to uh, take those black and white photographs and add uh, quite a bit uh, of color in the case of many of these stories uh, about Judy Garland and Frank Sinatra, Lana Turner. Um, so, uh, it really, that is just a, a treasure trove of, of information that was in those files. It's sort of the gift that kept on giving. Wow. Well, congratulations on the book, The Fixer. Please come back to this show anytime in the future. The door is always going to be open for you. I, I would love it. Thank you. Thank you, Arrow. It's been a pleasure. Thank you, Arrow. You guys be we brilliant will. today, okay? <laughs> we will try. Okay. I'm going to save your picture. Oh, thank you. I'll, I'll just send you the acoustic. How about that? <laughs> oh, that would be fantastic. <laughs> Have fun, you guys.